Hello, how you doing? Well, I want to talk to you about centres of mass, okay? Um, first of all, I don't know if I did the bond thing with you. I can't remember, it was a long time ago. Uh, but I didn't, sorry, but here. Okay, I'm not wearing the bond clothes, but let's do a bond pose for you. Some of the other classes have it, you see. Um, but yeah, sorry. I don't keep a gun in my back pocket, don't I? Um, anyway, yeah, I want to talk to you about centres of mass, okay? And um, before I do, let's just go for a few basics, okay? This here can be modelled as a uniform rod, okay? It's just a plank of wood, basically, right? But we can model it as a non-uniform rod. What we mean by that is, first of all, as a rod, it's got length only. We ignore the thickness and we ignore the other dimensions, okay? So when we model a rod, it's drawn like this, just a straight line, okay? So that's a modelling question sometimes you ask. Um, explain what is meant by a rod. It's basically a straight line and it's got uh, no thickness. Also that it doesn't bend as well. I mean, I can't bend this wood anyway. Um, but we assume that the straight line remains horizontal, it remains straight, it does not bend, okay? Also, uniform, well, as you can probably imagine, this blank wood is probably quite uniform, okay? So what that means is the centre of mass should be right in the middle. Oh, it's not, is it? It's not quite right in the middle. Or is it just me not being able to balance it properly? Yeah. It's very tough. I'm going to cheat a little bit. <laughs> Do you mind if I cheat? There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's, that's all right, isn't it? So that, yeah, that's what we mean by a uniform rod. Okay, the centre of mass is right in the middle. What the centre of mass means is that the mass of this piece, whatever that might be, I mean, it's probably about 100 grams or something like that. No, maybe 200, 150 grams. Yeah, it's quite light, okay? Um, what that means is the entire mass is centred about the centre point there, which is probably about there, okay? All right, you'll do more of that in M2 next year, more about centres of mass, okay? But in terms of the weight, yeah, there's a weight that's acting from the centre of it vertically downwards. Now, because I'm putting my fingers below where that weight would act, it's balanced, okay? It's balanced. What if I was to try and put it there, okay? You see what's happening, okay? Because the weight acts there, it's not. But what does it do? Does it fall directly? No, it doesn't, does it? It turns. No, maybe you can play the video in slow motion. Okay, let me just release my fingers again. So at the moment, it's perfectly balanced, but then, see? It did a turning effect, didn't it? Okay, that is what we call a moment. Okay, I know you did this in the previous section, but that's what we call a moment, okay? A moment is the ability of a force to turn an object. And what's happening is, you've got a force acting vertically downwards there, okay? And I'm trying to hold it there, pivoting the... Um, the, the plank of wood, okay, and it's going to produce what's called a turning effect, okay. If I don't want that to happen, then I just have two pivots like this, okay. Does that make sense? Good. Now, let me show you a non uniform rod. That's a non uniform rod, okay. Sound effects and everything, okay. Can you hear that? Good, yeah, lots of fun with this. Look what I'm doing now. So you can see where the centre of mass is, okay? The centre of mass is about there, isn't it? Because this is basically metal with the batteries. Quite a few batteries to power this. And this is just perspex glass and the lighting tube, okay? But that's keeping that one perfectly balanced there, okay? So we've got to deal with non-uniform rods and uniform rods. When it's a uniform rod, it's easy. You know that the weight is directed about the centre of the shape, okay? When it's non-uniform, Sometimes you've got to work out where that actually is, okay? I hope that was fine for you. Yeah. Uh, good. I need an opportunity to use that prop. Um, you were the only ones to get that, by the way, so consider yourself special. Let's look at example six now, all right? Let's look at example six. So it's that one there, yeah? Page 136. It talks about centres of mass and it mentions a bit about uniform and non-uniform rods. Okay. Sam and Tamsin are sitting on a non-uniform plank, AB, of mass 25 kilograms and length 4 metres. The plank is pivoted at N. So when you draw this, um, draw the straight line to represent the rod and draw where the pivot is and point M there. Okay. Now, can you see what I've drawn in there? Normal reaction force. Okay. So, you know, here, go on, because I know you want the thing. Yeah. Uh, in order to keep this balanced, you see, 
there's a normal reaction force exerted by my fingers onto the lightsaber. Okay. So this bit's called a hilt. Okay. Yeah. And there's a normal reaction. So if that normal reaction force wasn't there, it would just pull. And I'd be upset because this is quite expensive. Right, so there's a normal reaction force about the pivoting point, okay? otherwise the plank wood wouldn't be able to rest on it. Right? Um, the centre of mass of AB is at C. Right. So this is point C, that's where the weight is centred. Right? And it says that the mass of the plank is 25 kilograms, so the weight, vertically downwards of course, is 25 G. Okay? Um, and Sam has mass 35 kilograms. Tamsin has mass 25 kilograms and sits at A, so you can put Tamsin there with the weight of 25 G. Okay, uh, I've just not put Tamsin in yet. Okay, where must Sam sit for the plank to be horizontal? Now I've not put Sam in because you might not be given that diagram. Okay, you might not be given that diagram in the question. Okay, but I'm hoping that it's an obvious point that Sam has got to sit on that side. You know how a seesaw works. I'm hoping now a seesaw works from a children's playground, okay? Um, but basically, the way a seesaw works is that people, here are the uniform, but one person sits there, one person sits there, and they kind of seesaw up and down about the pivoting point, okay? Now, if you've got someone sitting there alone, it's going to do that, isn't it? If you've got another person sitting there, it's going to still do that. You need someone sitting on both sides in order to keep it balanced out, don't you? Yeah? Good. So Sam has got to sit somewhere here, okay? Because we don't know where it is, okay? But we do know it's somewhere, so it doesn't matter where you put it in. As long as you don't put it in at M or at B, then you're fine, okay? Now, how much does um, Sam um, weigh? He weighs 35G, doesn't he? Let's use the language there. He weighs 35G, okay? Uh, where must Sam sit for the plank to be horizontal? Okay. Now, it's often a good idea to use x to represent the distance. Use d if you want, but x is most common, okay? Um, there's a link to m2 because uh, in m2 we'll be looking at uh, two-dimensional objects. We'll have a lamina, okay? And we'll need to know a horizontal distance and a vertical distance. So we usually use x and y, okay? So that's why x is generally best to get into the habit of, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that x represents the distance that Sam is sitting from point A. I'm hoping that makes sense. Okay. Now, I often prefer to take moments about A. The textbook doesn't. Okay. Why do you think I like to, prefer, uh, to um, take moments about A? As long as it's not too complicated, I mean. Because, really, when we give an answer, we want to say that Sam is sitting this many metres from A. Or this many metres from B. Okay. It's... It's less useful, less helpful to know that Sam is sitting so many metres from M. Okay, you'd rather know how far from one of the ends Sam is sitting. Okay, so I always take it from... And also, in terms of doing the moments equation, I find generally to work outwards from the far left that way. Okay, it's like working with uh, anything, complex numbers, vectors, coordinates. I always start off at an origin, you see, and work out that way. So that's, that's why I tend to prefer that, okay. Um, before we begin, do we know what the value of R is? You can work it out, can't you? Okay, I'm just going to rub that out. I'm going to write in what R actually is. Because it's in equilibrium, it's balanced, the vertical forces must equal zero in total. So R must be equal to that plus that plus that, doesn't it? Yeah, 85G. So that's kind of easy. Okay, so you know, there's, there's no advantage to taking moments about M like the textbook does. Okay, I may as well take it about A. Right, so what we're going to do then? Right, remember that a moment is a force multiplied by a perpendicular distance. Okay, that's how mathematically we define the moment, that's how we calculate it. Force multiplied by perpendicular distance. Okay, so starting from A, 25G, that is zero meters from A, isn't it? So that one doesn't get count. There's no moment. Okay, there's no turning effect about that. Okay, um, go on then, third time for you. Okay, get the lightsaber up. Yes. And I'll do the sound effects. I can hear the cheers in the background. Okay. So, uh, what was I saying in my excitement? Okay. Yeah, if I decide to take moments um, about a particular point, okay, here, what I'm effectively saying is imagine I'm pivoting this lightsaber about that point. Okay. Imagine I'm pivoting about that point. Imagine the lightsaber is fixed at that point. That's what we mean, mean by taking moments about A, you see? We're trying to 
take a pivotal point about A. Imagine there's a pivot to A and see what's happening. If I apply a force, I'm doing it that way or that way. You can see it's not turning, is it? Okay, because when you apply a force at a pivotal point, it does not turn. Imagine this is a seesaw now, okay, and you're applying a force directly above the pivoting point. It's not going to turn, it's not going to rotate, okay. So, you know, that's the reason is because the force I'm applying has got a perpendicular distance of zero from where I'm applying it to, okay. There we go. That's the last time. Or was it? Or was it? Right, so let's take moments about Aiden. So, going from left to right, okay. So this here, that is going to be 25g multiplied by, oh, I've got to look at the distance now, uh, what was the distance? It does say somewhere that AC is 1.8. Let's just put that in, shall we? 1.8 metres. So 25g times by 1.8, okay? And what sort of moment is that, okay? That's a clockwise moment, isn't it? Okay. How do you determine that it's clockwise or anticlockwise? Um, what I do is this, okay? I kind of imagine that this force here is going around like that okay can you see that force there if this is a roundabout okay if this is a roundabout you know how roundabout works there's a lot of links to children's playground with this isn't it? a roundabout if there's a roundabout there that's the center of mass and that's the edge of the roundabout if someone's pushing it that way the roundabout is turning that way isn't it it's a clockwise moment okay this one however the arrow is going upwards so it'll be an anti-clockwise moment okay because it's an anti-clockwise moment we'll subtract that one okay We'll subtract that one. If we subtract 85g multiplied by, I've got to look up the distance again. Um, just check m was the midpoint, yeah, and it was um, four meters in length, yeah. So that's going to be times by two, yeah. And then this one, add to that one. Now another reason why I like to take moments about a is because it's easy for me to see that all those ones downwards, I can keep those having the same positive value. And that one opposite have a negative value. Okay, that's what I do. So I'm going to add on 35g multiplied by, and I still think I call it x, don't I? Okay, I still think I call it x. And what does that equal to? It equals zero because it's in equilibrium. All right, one equation, one unknown, x, that's it. Okay, first thing I would do is do this just divide that by g, keep it simple. Okay, it's always nice when that happens. Okay, so you can see it's not a good idea to write what that is. 25 times 9.8, it's not a good idea. Keep G in it, particularly with these moments questions. Keep G in as much as possible, all right? So 25 times 1.8, oh, I better use a calculator for that, I suppose. 1.8 times, mainly for speed, um, 45. Um, and then subtract, that's gonna be what, 170, um, plus 35X is equal to zero. So you got 35X, is equal to 170 minus 45, that's what, 125, and then x is equal to 125 divided by 35, 25 sevenths, 3.57, 3.57 meters. Now, as an answer, does that make sense? The question says, let's just check it, where must Sam sit for the plank to be horizontal? And if you say, answer is 3.57 meters, give some sort of reference, okay? 3.57 meters um, from A. That's enough. Or you can obviously do that subtracted from four, you know, 0 0.43 meters from B if you want, but that will be fine, okay? Was that good for you? I hope it was, okay, I hope it was. Um, next example, coming right up.